my dear friends, together with our individual and communal intentions, we pray for the needs of the whole church, especially those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this month, for the poor souls in purgatory, and for all those who are preparing to take major examinations in their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now call to mind our sins in order to make ourselves less unworthy of this celebration. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, foremost among the poor and humble, to be the mother of the Savior, grant, we pray, that following her example, we may offer you the homage of sincere faith and place in you all our hope of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you once were alienated and hostile in mind because of evil deeds. God has now reconciled you in the fleshy body of Christ through his death to present you holy without blemish and irreproachable before him provided that you persevere in the faith firmly grounded, stable, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard which has been preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, am a minister. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And in your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priests could lawfully eat, ate of it, and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today's Gospel reminds us that in our desire to be faithful to God's commandments, we should resist the tendency and the temptation of becoming sticklers for details. We fall into the trap of nitpicking. For sure you have uh, encountered this word already. Nitpicking. We fall into such trap if we forget the truth that a part of something can never in any way become more important than the totality of the whole. Consider the case of the Pharisees. They were so zealous about obedience to the law. They wanted to uphold fidelity to the law but in the process of doing so they ended up becoming near sighted they started to highlight certain parts of the law and disregarding all the rest consider what's mentioned in today's gospel narrative the Pharisees were so quick to notice the problematic act of the disciples picking the heads of grain on the Sabbath. Immediately, they categorized such an act as unlawful, prohibited, not acceptable on a Sabbath. Immediately, they noticed that. But they failed to, some, to notice something more important. Unsay wa nila makita that there must be a very good reason for doing it. And what could be the possible reason? The experience of King David and his companions could very well give us the answer. Most probably, the disciples were hungry. Why were they hungry? Well, they were not. They will. They were not VIPs. They were ordinary people who work with the Lord. They were constantly on a journey proclaiming the word of God. And because they were new and the teachings of the Lord were quite controversial, we could only imagine that most of the time no open invitation was available for them. At the end of a long day, there was no home, no welcoming home, no banquet prepared for them. Can you imagine such situation? And they were walking through a, a field. 
with heads of grain available for them. Igutom in town sila. May mga mga Pharisees, they were well provided for. That they did not see. They failed, they miserably failed to see that, that they were hungry. My dear friends, what's the challenge for all of us? There is this tendency for us to do nitpicking also in our dealings with each other. I read somewhere as an example that some parents are quick to highlight the poor grades, the misbehavior of their children, their lack of uh, ambition, their failure to achieve something. A lot of parents can immediately highlight that, but are very forgetful that their children are loving, their children are sincere, their children are cordial, friendly, values which are very important also. So, dalitang makita o sayop, niya tungod sa itong pagka-focus sa sayop, di na ta makita sa maayong buhat. That was the problem of the Pharisees. And the Lord's in today's celebration is inviting us to avoid such pitfall. If we do that, then we remember with all our hearts the words of the Lord, it is mercy I desire, not sacrifice. Obedience to the law of God does not in any way exempt us from being compassionate. Please find time to pray over the letter of Paul to the letter of Paul to Timothy. First letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 6, verses 3 to 5. And as you do so, beg the Lord for the grace of subscribing to the spirit of the law, not to the letter of the law. Amen. We all rise and present to the Lord our needs and the needs of the whole church. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. May church leaders have the heart of Jesus, who is close to the simple, the unlearned, the poor, and the wayward, we pray. Lord, Lord, give, give us, us a heart, heart that, that understands, understands people's needs. May judges and law enforcers have recourse to the spirit behind the law rather than its literal interpretation, we pray. Lord, Lord give, give us, us a heart, heart that understands people's needs. May we refrain from loading on others the burden that we ourselves cannot or unwilling to carry, we pray. Lord, Lord, give, give us, us a heart that understands people's needs. May the Christian Sabbath, or Sunday, the day of the Lord, be a time for rest, family togetherness, and enjoying God's creation, we pray. Lord, Lord give, give us, us a heart that understands people's needs. May we always remember that the good of the human person is the highest law, and that love does no harm to anyone. We pray. Lord, give, give us, us a heart that understands people's needs. May the good Lord find it beneficial for us to raise the venerable servant of God, Chofelo Kamomot, Bishop, to the glory of the altar. We pray. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. Merciful Father, you provide time and season in all affairs in the world. Teach us to spend our time wisely for your greater glory and for our neighbor's good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Beloved, pray that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We offer you, O Lord, these offerings of conciliation and praise, humbly asking that following the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may present our very selves as a holy sacrifice pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Their 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, together with all the bishops, the clergy, men and women, religious, everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now complete our prayers and our praises by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. From the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to partake of the sacred banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the silence of our hearts now, we pray for all our brothers and sisters who are sick, who are homebound for various reasons. O God, who will that our infirmities be borne by your only begotten Son, to show the value of human suffering. Listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, old age, problems, and other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed. May they never feel alone, for they are united to Christ in His suffering for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pro nobis Santa Dei Genitrix. Oremus. Omnipotens sempiterni Deus, qui gloriosi Virginis Matris Marie Corpus et Animam, ut dignum fili tui abitaculum ifici mereretur, Spiritus Santo cooperante preparasti, da ut poius commemorazione leitamur, eius pia intercessione ab instantibus malis, et a morte perpetua liberemur, perium dem Christum Dominum nostrum. Dear friends, authentic obedience to God's commandments excludes holier-than-thou attitude and judgmental tendencies. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go forth. Glorify God in your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Take care.